river run, run through the hills, run river run to the sea, run river run to your place beneath the sun, run river run over me. Hi, this is Jan Lewis. Welcome to Be My Guest. We have from Hopkinton today, we have Amy Beck. And she is the director of senior services up there. And Sam Doktovich, I said it right, he leads the Age Dementia Friendly Program, the initiative over there. And I read about this, we are just talking about it, in I think the Hopkinton News. I was up there, we had come back from, I think, a funeral one day in Holliston. And I think I picked it up, maybe at Price Chopper? Do you mm -hmm. Okay, that's where I got it. Of course, I pour over these because the most wonderful people pop out you know, really human interest stuff. It's terrific. And I said, we've got to get them on the show. So did you two meet at the Hopkinton Senior Center originally? So yeah. I've been with uh, the Senior Center for about 10 years now. Yeah. And um, when we had an opening on our board, Sam's name came up. Yeah. And so we brought him onto our Council on Aging board. Yeah. And from there, we've been working a little bit uh, to set up this age and dementia friendly initiative and I asked Sam and Sam said yeah. he said yes well, I, he I, didn't know what he was getting into I, I, <laughs> <laughs> as my wife said do you know what you were getting into so because it's uh, such an, a comprehensive initiative involving so much of the town but I was looking for something uh, to do and get my teeth into after I retired yeah I like giving back um, I used to participate in a mission trip with a uh, church in Westboro where we went to Appalachia oh, yeah. with kids to do home repair. I did that for 17 years. So I was looking for something new to uh, really add value to my retirement where I could add value to the initiative. Well, they gave me this wonderful pamphlet and help make Hopkinton an age and dementia friendly community. Harkin out there, all the rest of the, uh, the senior citizen centers, this is fantastic. Now, its official name is the Dementia Friends. What, how do you call, what do you call that? Well, there are several organizations in the state that are our partner organizations that sponsor part of this. So this overall initiative, the Age Friendly and Dementia Friendly Initiative, is, uh, is sponsored by the Massachusetts Council on Aging mm -hmm. and the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. But there are two other organizations. One is Dementia Friends, mm -hmm. which is an international organization and a U.S. organization with a chapter in each state. So they help sponsor certain activities, which are called Dementia Friend Information Sessions. In 2022, we did seven of them in Hopkinton, and yeah. resulting in 139 new Dementia Friends, and we're now setting our schedule for 2023. We're gonna have it four or five this year, plus ones that we're trying to arrange specifically with, say, the faith community at a church, or with the scouts, so there's a lot of opportunity to get our message out to the uh, community. Do That's you have really to priority be one. A resident of Hopkinton. No. Aha. No. So no. It, I was just going to say it kind of started also several years before that, and, and then COVID struck, and yeah. so we were kind of held up. And so Sam's the one who, when we wanted to get it back and running, kind of ran with it at that time. Yeah, that's but a it's always been your your your, your dream, your it, vision it has, to have this happen. Well, we had a volunteer who had had a uh, family member who had um, a, a, one of the forms of dementia, and so she was instrumental in getting us to start a memory cafe, which was kind of our yeah. four way for foray into this. And so we had a memory cafe, which is an and Sam can describe it better. He volunteers at every single one we have, <laughs> but again, it's it's a it's a, I want to say a social gathering where people with dementia and their caregiver can come and it breaks down that whole who's who kind of who has the issue who doesn't mm -hmm. and it it becomes more of a um, I guess a, a, a friendly way for everyone to enjoy the community is it and be a part a success? of it. Is it a real success? It, it is. sounds like it would be. It is. Yeah, and that again, the dementia, <coughs> the uh, memory cafes that we that we host are every thir first Thursday of the month um, at 1 p.m. at the senior center. They're open to people from all towns, mm -hmm. and we usually have a musician and there's he plays songs and people sing along, they dance along, we have refreshments. But it's a, it's a social hour. It's that for people really to get out. And that's where I really started understanding more about the challenges that people have who are living with dementia. Mm -hmm. my, my mom passed from dementia. 
both of my wife's parents passed with dementia. Can't say they passed from dementia, but they had dementia when they passed. And when you start um, relating to people in a social way, you really start understanding that, boy, these people are just like everyone else. Yeah. You know, I have now I have my group of friends that I see at least once a month. Mm -hmm. And I go around table to table and I sit with them and I ask, you know, Bill how he's doing and I ask uh, Ursula how she's doing and sure. you, know, you go and then people chat and they talk about their lives and you know, so they have some type of cognitive impairment. It doesn't make them any less a person. And no, are they aware of it, though? That's, I think if it was me, I would like, the worst would be to be aware that it was happening. I don't know. Are they aware of it? Yeah, I, and I, you know, dementia is like a, and I'm not the expert on dementia, but it is kind of a, a journey. And mm -hmm. so at different points, people are more aware of what they're dealing with than at others. Yeah, um, aware. And so I think you have people at various stages who come to the memory cafes. But the real reason behind the age in dementia was to break down that stigma. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to make sure that everyone's a part of the community yeah. um, and, and that they feel a sense of belonging no matter where you are in your stage, whether you're young, whether you're older, whether you're dealing with dementia. I mean, you would never shut someone away with cancer, mm -hmm. so why would we shut someone away with dementia? And I think that's really what the whole initiative is about is really a sense of belonging for the whole community and having people understand how to talk to people and and kind of get away from this is this I mean it's a it's an awful thing to go through no question but but to break down from that and realize we're still people and we're still part of the community no matter where you are in that journey and, and I think that we process. have to tiptoe around the person at all no you know that's the part that I've seen people like, oh, oh, I better not say anything, or I better be quiet, or walk around this. And, but now, with the initiative, the um, the age-friendly initiative, this is like a class for how many weeks? Well, it, you know, it, what, what we're trying to do with this initiative, and what makes it different than just the programs, because mm -hmm. we have in Hoppington a really wonderful senior center and senior, senior services organization. We have you two have outreach. a thrift shop in there. I've been we there. We have a great <laughs> thrift shop and there's a lot of stuff that's coming out of my house, decluttering yep. my house that goes to the thrift shop. Yep. Um, we have wonderful outreach coordinators that work with people and we have a lot of programs, exercise programs, cultural programs, but what makes this initiative different is how we're getting the rest of the town engaged. Mm -hmm. So we have an action team and we have members from the police department, the fire department, town government, the health department, the library, the Hoppington Council for uh, Center for the Arts, and so we have. We're, we're trying to take what we do so well at the senior center and spread it out across the whole community and get everyone engaged because it really does. It does impact everyone. And people are aging it? in place. It's like a course, right? A course, six weeks, is it? No, 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 no. no, no. The the initiative is going to be a multi-year journey. It's really a marathon. Mm -hmm. So we're in our second year of the initiative. Okay. So we have this action team that gets together every other month, yeah. and we're putting together a plan of things that we want to do across the town, okay. not just in the senior center. Because when you think about how you can make your community more age-friendly mm -hmm. and dementia-friendly, think of something, a simple change as curbs on the sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when we had curbs everywhere and people with walkers and wheelchairs couldn't get up? So they passed a law and they made those little ramps and it's transformed a little simple thing like that. Doesn't cost any more money yeah. to build a sidewalk with a ramp. Has transformed how people with a walker or wheelchair can get around. Okay. So we're looking at infrastructure changes, we're looking at changes in how people um, work with people that have that are living with dementia, so we uh, are looking to how can we spread this information so when you're on the phone with somebody, you're calling the tax collector's office, <laughs> they can listen yeah. for certain signals yeah. and therefore change how they're going to react to the person because maybe the person is suffering from mild cognitive impairment I like and that. needs more help. They, they know in, intuitively, do they get a list of what things to look out for? So I think the big thing, I mean, we have these sessions, information sessions, and they're about an hour and a quarter, an hour and a half long. Yeah. And so it's a one session where you can one sit. One session, okay. Yeah, one session. And so it's really not giving a lot of your time, but hopefully it's spreading awareness. It's breaking down the stigma. It's it's giving people tools to kind of work with others. And, and again, some of them apply to people with dementia or could apply to someone with autism. And so there's there's certainly, that's why it's age-friendly also. Um, yeah. There are actually two different initiatives. 
we've combined them and a lot of seniors um, a lot of communities are combining them and doing them both at the same time and it's interesting uh, Massachusetts is I think at the forefront of this as far as mm. as many communities are getting it involved doesn't surprise with it. me is UMass in on this too that, that wouldn't surprise me either they're in on some of the health care sides yeah. I, I work with the Massachusetts Alzheimer's Dementia Research Center team, yeah. and UMass is part of that. Part, so, yeah, that yeah. doesn't surprise. That's wonderful. Have you approached them with your w wonderful program? Well, we're we're just back uh, piggybacking on <laughs> what the doing. state's doing, yeah. And, yeah. and so yeah. we're. We're not leading the way, we're leading the way in our community, but there are so yeah. many communities involved in this. And it's really, it's interesting how little simple changes can, you can actually become a part of this and be active in it. Um, yeah. A lot of senior centers are working towards this at this point, as, as bringing the community into it, I should say. Yeah. I mean, because it really does involve the community. And as Sam said, you know, having educated 139 people last year is huge and I think wow. you know as we get more and more then it ripples out how and many I think one hour long sessions does that make 139 people well we had seven sessions, seven sessions. the yeah. smallest group we had was six the biggest group we had was 39 mm -hmm. so uh, all at one o'clock on what day that we no, no we, we do we do them in different good. locations okay. at different times so we have uh, we've done two at uh, churches in Hopkinton yeah We've done one at the library. Uh, we did one at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Yeah, we have and been a, there. And a couple <laughs> at the Senior Center. In fact, mm -hmm. when our first one that we're going to have for uh, 2023 is at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts, which I believe will be the first Thursday in April. And that's which, that cute white building, the white old yep. White House. Mm -hmm. Yep. We've been to a few art exhibits in there. Right. Yep. Interesting. And the, the Memory Cafe is the thing that's once a month at 1 o'clock. Right at the Hawkins Senior Center. At the yeah. Senior Center. And, and so that's a there. separate event to what these sessions are. And that's an ongoing every month um, program that we do. We tried to, during COVID, we even did a few yeah. uh, remotely, which is not as much as, as satisfying as having everyone mm -hmm. in the same room. Amy, how can they reach you? Yeah, so I'm at the Hopkinton Senior Center. Our number is 508-497-9730. Um, you can ask for me. Um, Sam also um, takes emails, and I don't know if you do phones as well. Sure. But I'm always willing to talk to anyone who wants to either get involved in one of our sessions or participate in helping the initiative, because like we said, this is a cross-community initiative, so we'd like to have more people volunteer. We do have good good uh, participation from the different organizations I mentioned, but mm -hmm. more people involved because it does impact the community. Everything we can do to make Hoppington yeah. a better place for people to age in place, a better place for people who, and their caregivers mm -hmm. who are living with dementia, it's better for everybody. So well, you feed our new, our new community center that's being built yes, over here. Yes, exactly. You must be, nice be very excited. As soon as that gets going, they've got two new uh, leaders, ladies, welcome, in our Upton Senior Center, we mm -hmm. call it the community center. They might be very interested in this. Well, so and I let me just give my contact yeah. information before we forget. Nope. I forget. <laughs> it's uh, my number is 508-259-4839, and my email is s and my last name, which is spelled d-o-c-k-n-e-v-i-c-h at gmail dot com. And Sam is the, the the best point for this. So if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. I would probably defer Amy to Sam. Amy has a full-time job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As she reminds me of several times, right? <laughs> you know, the, senior direct, the senior center in Hopkinton for six years? or how many? I have been the director for over four, yeah. um, and I've been at the senior center for over ten. So, That's amazing. You yeah. don't look old enough to have been there that long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised. Oh my! Do you have any anybody in your family that is uh, coping with dementia? No, but you know, uh, not that I've been aware of, um, fortunately. Uh, but I know that um, we have a number of people who do come to the senior center. We've dealt with you know a lot of involvement um, with different other uh, groups that that have people that are dealing with it. And I think what the the person who kind of got us started this. Um, Pan, uh, Pat Stradava, excuse me, Pat, um, <laughs> totally fumbling names. She's the one who kind of brought me into this and because she'd had a family member. And so she was the moving force before we got Sam in and then they've worked together. Yeah, um, Pat's my spiritual leader. What's I her name her. again? Pat Stradawa. Indian? She's Indian? No, no. No, oh. no it's okay, S-R-O-D-A-W-A. Oh, that's like, yeah, that, okay, that for a second. She comes from like, Michigan, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and, I think what was great about that is Pat really 
this was personal to her and so she made it personal mm -hmm. and you can't help but feel for for what she went through and how she dealt with it and not having the support at mm -hmm. the time now there's so many ways to support people and we do have uh, support groups that work with the caregivers um, and and I think that's that's really the key is just yeah. you know finding a way to help others go through whatever they're dealing with. And there's so many organizations that support us and can support people mm -hmm. who are living with some form of dementia or mm -hmm. people as they age in place but what we think we do is we kind of bring all this information together in mm -hmm. one form. So one thing I we did initially was let's make a directory of all these resources that are available. You have mm -hmm. the Alzheimer's Association, you have um, other organizations inside the state, state organizations, private organizations, but people can hunt and peck to find these. Sure. So we developed a resource directory that people can get if they want. Just email me, I'll send you a copy of it, and yeah. you'll have uh, access to different places that you can get all the information because there's so much uh, information available and support available. We're talking with Amy Beck, and she is the Director of Senior Services at the Hopkins Senior Center. And Sam Doknovich, got that right, he leads the Age Dementia Friendly Initiative. And they gave me a great brochure. Do you have extras, or would you like me to post it downstairs in uh, the lobby of our... I brought a couple with me, but I can bring you some more. Sure. Okay, okay, because I, I travel a lot, all over the lot, and this would be great for other people to know about this, too. Um, raising dementia awareness, that's one. Break the stigma associated with dementia, address the issues that make life harder to manage as you age. That fascinates me, what you just said about the phone. Let's see, somebody at the town hall answers the phone, and it's a senior with dementia on the other end, and they, you teach them what to, what to listen for. That's, our, that's one of our plans for 2023, like is to provide that. them more training and then give them the information so they can help direct the person. That's it's awesome. not just on yeah. the phone, too. Think about going shopping. Mm -hmm. So typically, I mean, we're New Englanders. We've got to go fast, fast, right? Yep, get it done. Get it fast. <laughs> so you're in line, and there's somebody in front of you that's having a problem, maybe putting their food up that they need to be scanned or paying for it or mm -hmm. writing a check if people still write checks. And what's your natural tendency? Ah, oh, I'm going to be late. Let's go, 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 <laughs> yeah. go. Yeah. But if you were more sensitive to yeah. that person's needs, you, they may have some type of mild cognitive impairment and they need a little extra time and maybe the cash, cashier needs to be trained to give a little bit special attention to that mm -hmm. type of person so they are, they are allowed to have a normal life rather than, well, if you can't meet my schedule for doing it fast, 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 mm -hmm. get out of here. So we're trying to work with businesses too to bring that training and How that about understanding. The, what do you think, I don't know, this is just a, maybe a crazy idea, but what about what do they call them? The uh, helper dogs or something like that? Do many of the people with dementia have those yet? No, no, not that I've seen. That's really for more of the people that have sight issues. Yeah, definitely. Now, again, when is the next uh, meeting going to be? The, which meeting? For the, the uh, dementia... The oh, dementia-friendly yeah. session. Yeah. The next dementia information session will be April 6th okay. at the Hoppington Center for the Arts at 7 p.m. Okay, 7 p.m. That's good because I'm always saying, you know what, everything at the senior centers are like in the morning, and a lot of us don't get there in the morning. And I'm like, why can't they make it after 3 o'clock or after 7 o'clock? The Art Center in Hopkinton. It's, a, it's, it's what's the street that it's on again? Hayden it's on Road? Hayden Road Street. Hayden Road. And it has also this big white barn. Is that for the plays they put on too? They have a beautiful auditorium in yeah. there and a lot of classroom space. Yeah, it's all been well. redone. It's really pretty. So amazing. it's a regular auditorium like you'd see in a New York stage. Correct. Just smaller, but yes, yeah. and a lot of classrooms are in there as well. And classrooms but too. The information they can certainly find on um, the Senior Center website as well as um, if they go. They can pull up our newsletters and there'll be information about all the uh, programs that we have going on, including the dementia friendly sessions, Definitely. et cetera. Um, mitigate senior, oh boy, I can't imagine being uh, isolated. I think I'd be in a nut farm. I can't isolate. It's, it's actually poison to me, but mitigate senior isolation and feelings of despair. Well, the one, typically what happens when somebody is diagnosed with dementia, their friends give up on them. Yeah. Because they think, Bill can't go get coffee. No. Bill can't go to a baseball game. I can't sit down and play cards with Bill. I can't go to the movies with Bill anymore because he has dementia. Can't go no. out to eat anymore. Yeah, right? exactly. And that's totally untrue. Yeah. You know, Bill may have early 
mild cognitive impairment for quite a long period of time where you can do just about everything that we can do yeah. with a little bit of special help maybe here and there. Yeah, so we have a friend who her husband was 100 years young. He just passed away. He would come, what a good sport. He would come along with us. I don't think it was a serious dementia, but I think he couldn't hear most of it. But he would sit there politely and go along with it. He was a real model for a lot of us to look at. So we're trying to break that stigma so people will say, well, I can still take Bill out for a cup of coffee. Yeah. We can still go for a walk on a trail around mm -hmm. our wonderful, beautiful state. You should state. come to the beach with us. Exactly. Just a good, good sport. Well, at several of the Dementia Friends information sessions, we've actually had people who are living with dementia yeah. tell their story, very really? powerful stories, and they say, I am so happy that I'm here with you wonderful people because I, I like to know that I can share my life with you yeah. and you're not going to run and hide. And they just feel like wonderful. And then when people come to one of our sessions who may be supporting someone who's living with dementia, yeah. they feel, oh, I'm not alone. No. So they meet all these other people here that are just entering in on this journey. Right. And it shows them where they can get resources, where they can get help, and they don't feel alone. So uh, yeah. I don't know if my mother, my father, no. I don't think that's, I would have to say in that side of the family. I don't know about my mother at the end. I, She was shifted back and forth from the hospital to a nursing home, so it was hard to get you know, that's pretty discombobulating, you know, and she wasn't feeling well to begin with, so I don't think I'll ever know. I think someone said to me, yeah, she had it, but I'm not so sure. She was pretty sharp. Yeah, but well, again, I shouldn't say that because people with dementia are smart. Yeah, yes. and there's different types of cognitive impairment, too, yeah. other than dementia, like Parkinson's yeah. and other diseases that attack the brain. Because what dementia basically does, whatever form, mm -hmm. it attacks a part of the brain. You lose brain function. You lose cells, you lose neurons, you lose all the synapses, and you start not being able to do higher level functions. Doesn't mean you lose all your functions. No. My mother, my uh, father's mother, my grandmother, paternal, she had Parkinson's, and it was bad. And she said, I feel like my body is like traitor to me mm -hmm. because she was so sharp and so creative and everything. All of a sudden, it, they have the mask face. Mm -hmm. She wasn't the grandma that I knew, mm -hmm. but that's, we watched it happen, but that was back in the 60s. Now we've had people on here with Parkinson's and their games, they're doing like with uh, art and uh, music. What a different world. And that's what I, where I think this is so important for, yeah. for all communities. I mean, I think, you know, why have a segment of the, of the population not be engaged and involved and cared mm -hmm. for and respected? And I think... You know, that's the, the key. Everyone should be part of the community wherever you are. I mean, and, and we've seen that in uh, children over the years as they've been included into schools and into regular classrooms. Instead of shunting people away, mm -hmm. make them part of the community. And yeah. it, it's great for everybody because sure. not only children who see their parents or their grandparents or their friends' parents, now they can appreciate it and sure. they have an understanding. and. You know, that's what it's all about. It's about Definitely. caring for each other. Now, the last one I'm reading is make it easier for seniors and people with dementia to live, thrive, work, and remain in the community. That is, if I would imagine, what do you think, maybe a hundred years ago, these sweet people would have been put in an asylum. Yeah. Look what happened to people who had Down syndrome. Yeah. And you know, my brother had Down syndrome, and my mom took him home, and he was mainstreamed. And then on my wife's side of the family, my my father-in-law, his sister had Down syndrome, and mm. in Connecticut they put her in the Southington yeah. you know, home, and then they disbanded those because it was just, mm. you know, not mainstreaming them, was just not giving them all the opportunity to enjoy their life because you're going to hide them away. Well, you know, while they did a little plug for the Hopkinton Senior Center, I've been in there. <laughs> and I know we're getting a new one here in uh, Upton, so, but I do know at the Hopkinton one they have a thrift shop, they have a beautiful big gun. Um, kind of like an auditorium. My husband and I had gone, or there was a, some doctors with a spine center a few years ago. Something about your mm -hmm. spine. That was really cool. I mean, it's really nice. It really, really is. Like that thrift shop, you got to see it. <laughs> well, hours that, that brings people in. But yeah. yeah, so the senior center is open 8.30 to 4, Monday mm -hmm. through Thursday, and 8.30 to 2 on Fridays. Mm -hmm. And the thrift store is pretty much... You know, nine to to three in the afternoon, two in the afternoon, depending on the you know the day. Um, and 
you know, we're certainly able to let people in, but there is a lot going on. And, you know, a mm. plug to all senior centers because they're making it happen. Yeah. Um, there's a lot going on at senior centers. It's not just, you know, little classes. I mean, we have a slew in Hopkinton of exercise programs, and mm. we have balance programs, and we have a pool room with tables, and we have art classrooms and a computer lab, and we serve lunch. A lot of senior centers may or may not, they may do more, they may do a little less. It all depends on their funding and what they can offer. But they're active and they're engaged in the yeah. community. And it is, you know, I've had people say, well, I'm not old enough to go to a senior center. And I get that, <coughs> except that I don't, because yeah. there's so much for everyone. Yeah. And I think that's the part that, you know, people have to understand. All these senior centers are there for seniors for the community and it's a great opportunity to become a part of something and to meet new people. I know of it this but the senior center in uh, Worcester I, I was in there and it was so funny I was walking around and I was seeing all these things for the seniors and I walked out and I said I'm not old enough yet <laughs> and I felt like the kid that was kicked to the can but they have a pool table mm -hmm. and they were doing ballroom dancing when I was visiting there. I thought, well, I'm just going to jump in. They won't notice me. <laughs> so I did. I cannot, for the life of me, keep up with ballroom dancing. It took me a year to learn the Macarena. I'm not good in <laughs> group function. I mean, if I go off by myself and do, you know, whatever I'm not gonna it is. not going to dance for you either. So I that can't. Is the but same no issue. one's going to judge you, and that's <laughs> the important thing. I know in, we have people at various levels of ability as far mm -hmm. as physical ability, and that's why we have so many right. different options. And I think, yeah. you know, the big part is just go to your senior center, check it yeah, out. Yeah. You know, we, we think it's one thing and then we find out it's more. Before and we close, again, how can they reach you both? So I'm at the Hopkinton Senior Center. Our number is 508-497-9730. And the best way probably to get a hold of me is email. So it's very simple. It's my first initial S, my last name, Doknovich, and I'll spell that again even though Jan did a great job pronouncing it. <laughs> I it's skipped right by. S D O C K N E V I C H at gmail.com. Now, on the back of the uh, folder, fold flyer, it says, How can I help? Volunteers out there. Everybody can help make Hopkinton an age friendly and dementia friendly community. For more information and to find out how you can participate in this initiative, call the Hopkinton Senior Center at 508 497 nine seven three zero and I'm sure they don't kick any volunteers to the sort of thing. Absolutely not. Because when you were going through the programs I was gonna to say to Amy we should compliment our volunteers. Yeah. How many volunteers do you have working now? We on have things? about hundred and forty I think plus volunteers. We That's also hot. have teenagers from the high school yeah. that come over and help in the computer lab after their school hours. So we yeah. have a lot of people that help in a variety yeah. of capacities and sometimes it's once a month, sometimes it's just special occasions. So so, you know, I know everyone's busy and they're not sure they want to commit to every week or every mm -hmm. day. You don't have to. No. And I think no. most senior centers also are in the same boat. Yeah. We love our volunteers. We're so grateful for what they yeah. can do. We can't operate without our volunteers. No. Thank you, both of you, for being with us today. And enjoy the sunny day. Are you going back to the senior center right oh, now? I will be. Yeah, she will. The senior center. <laughs> I am going home, but I'm going home and talk to Pat. And she texted me and said, can we chat? That's my spiritual advisor. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so, so. Say, oh, my wife said, can we chat? Yes. Okay, so this is your spiritual advisor. Yeah, my, my wife did have a comment who's more important than okay. Pat. So I had to give my wife more attention later. Smart guy. <laughs> what Absolutely. is the saying? Happy wife, happy life? Exactly. I think, you know, I thought about that off and on thinking, you know, is that true? And I thought it might be. Anyway, it's not our grandparents and great-grandparents senior centers anymore, guys. You know, the boomers are coming up, the Xers are coming up. It's not going to be long. You're going to be influxed. <laughs> no more just sitting there and playing bingo or just doing a chair. It's going to be a, what do you call it, a real tidal wave of fun. <laughs> All right, thank you, and we'll see you next time. I'll be my guest. on a shooting star Heading out toward a dream Tomorrow's even closer than it seems 